few weeks and that is chub fishing on the canal. I think as an all-rounder one of the things that you are very much aware of particularly in the winter and in conditions like these and I'll come to that in a moment is that you tend to find yourself gravitating towards the fish that give you a chance of getting something on the bank. Not that you don't like a challenge of course I always love a challenge but I find myself chub fishing in the winter cruise and carp fishing in the summer, that sort of thing, tench fishing in the spring, you know the sort of thing that I'm talking about. Anyway, regarding the conditions, these are probably the worst that we can have. When it's rock bottom, and it's been rock bottom for a while, at least it stabilises and the fish get used to it. But what we've had over the last couple of weeks now is we've had the water temperature has been all over the place. We may have had two days on the trot where it looks like it's stabilising and then it either shoots up or it shoots back down. And putting the water, or putting the thermometer in the water when I arrived uh, today, that confirmed again that it's all over the place. So not good conditions, but as always, as long as you're baiting the water, you've got a chance. I've arrived late afternoon, I've only got three hours, I'm playing football tonight, fishing from three till six. But that's the thing with fishing, it's not so much the number of hours that you spend on the bank, but the time that you spend them. So in other words, particularly with the canal being quite clear at the moment, and today was a bright sunny day, although not warm, it was bright and sunny, uh, conditions weren't ideal for the middle of the day, so you could fish six hours throughout the day and blank, and yet you can come for those three hours at dusk or dawn of course or even into dark and you've got a much better chance of catching so a lot of people you know say to me just in conversation you know we don't have a lot of time to to fish and my reply is always that's fine because a lot of my sessions aren't all day long or three day sessions or three night sessions or whatever um, a lot of my sessions are just short and if you can keep them at the right time sweet as well as the sun's setting, I knew there were fish out there, lots of little plucks, and I've just caught this tiny, well, tiny roach, this small roach, when you consider that I'm fishing with a size six oak and a big chunk of bread. Think of canal roach fishing, particularly at this time of the year and in these conditions, and you're looking at one, point, one pound, six ounce uh, bottom or 12 ounce bottom hook length, uh, size 22 hook, size 24 hook even, and a tiny, a bread punch or a, a similar size bait and there I am <laughs> catching one on a, on a size six and a, and a chunk of bread that big. Amazing isn't it? Although I must admit it did whittle that bread down a little bit first before it got the rest of it in its mouth. But they all count and I'm not a blanker. You can't see me of course but you can hear me and it's dark and I've just had a, a little bit of a pull round and I've got my first chub of the evening. And as you can see it on the screen, that means I've netted it. And the words about the fish being on the screen, of course, were spoken in faith, because at that time I hadn't actually netted it. And how close was it? Because the hook came out in the landing net. Anyway, I'm just happy to be off the mark. Not a big fish, but very welcome indeed. I've got some bread uh, mixed with water, as you can see there. A little bit in the bottom. It's very, very sloppy. That will literally just break up into tiny pieces when it hits the water and I'll, sh I'll show you that in a moment and then to that and later as well when I've got a little bit of bread there don't want to overfeed the fish I've got some uh, some lobworm ground bait so that's my plan of attack this time and of course sticking to the the bread on the hook size six hook all or nothing so to speak although as you saw yesterday I can still pick up small fish along the way as well This is quite a problem where, where I'm fishing. You can see there it's, uh, it's hooked quite a, a reasonable sized uh, branch. That's one of the things, isn't it, really? Where you're fishing, often 
overhanging branches, that sort of thing. Of course it means that uh, you get that sort of stuff beneath the water as well. Never mind, whenever it goes a bit quiet and I don't get the little plucks from the small fish because they are quite active today, I know that I'm probably hooked onto a branch so I'll pull it in and cast out again. Like a boomerang, I'm back. I didn't catch anything on session two. I had lots and lots of uh, roach plucks but of course with the size of the bait and the hook I wasn't going to catch many. I did catch the, the one, of course, on, uh, on my first outing, but that was a bit of a bit of a fluke, really. Anyway, I'm watching the rod top now. Although I've got a bite alarm, it isn't switched on. It's just as a, as a rod rest. This is a very visual sort of fishing, and I've been here about half an hour so far at first light. Put a bit of ground bait out, uh, some pieces of bread. The water temperature is up 0.8 Celsius overnight. We've had a very mild night, and that's mainly down to the fact that the wind direction has changed, come from the southwest. It brought lots of rain as well. We had heavy rain overnight and the canal, well, it's like a grey colour where I am. It depends the terrain of course, where you're fishing. Sometimes it's a, an orangey colour, other times it's more of a soily, dirty colour. Here it's quite grey because all the water has uh, washed into the canal and it's caused it to go that particular colour where I am. But I'm getting a few little taps now from Breen, so uh, if I do catch my first fish, unless a chub nips in, I've got a feeling it might be a Breen. Well, it's certainly tough going, uh, not just this session, but this week as a whole. And of course that's angling for you, isn't it, and certainly at this time of the year. I think if you're a blogger, you have to record the uh, the lows as well as the highs. If we give a false impression, we're deceiving ourselves, aren't we? If we're cutting out all the uh, the difficult sessions and only majoring on the good ones, but also as well for youngsters coming in or maybe novices as a whole, they they look at the stuff that we put out there, and uh, it may discourage them because they think, hang on, I went fishing and I had a, I had a couple of blanks. This guy catches a two pound roach, 10 pound barbel every time he goes out. Let's face it, it's not like that, is it? And without giving too much away, um, I do know people who, uh, who fit into that, uh, that, that category. They deliberately choose to ignore some of the, uh, the more difficult sessions that they have. And not only that, but they actually, um, shall we say, exaggerate some of, the, uh, some of the good ones. And at the end of the day, all we're doing is fooling ourselves, isn't it? I may blank today, I've got a little bit more uh, time left. I may blank today, that'll be two on the trot if I do. But this morning, I've been watching a male bullfinch. I saw a sparrow hawk come over. I was watching a couple of missile thrushes, a little group of jackdaws going uh, wild at each other. And uh, above all, it's about enjoying it, isn't it? And catch or not, I always enjoy the sessions that I do. Hey, I'm into a fish. Good things come to those who wait. In the net. I love saying that. It means I haven't had a hook pull. There it is. Nice enough chub, isn't it? It's amazing how one fish can rescue your session. Anyway, I'm certainly happy with this. Well, I was a happy enough camper before. I'm just a happier one now after catching that fish. It just shows, doesn't it? As we often say in angling, and we encourage one another with the words, you know, keep at it, keep persevering, stick at it, because you never know, you're only one split second away from your rod tip going round, your float disappearing, or whatever, and you're into a fish. But you have to realize that it is, uh, it is tough, as I've really stressed throughout this video at certain times of the year. And I think I'm going to call this blog entry, tell it as it is, because that's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, it's about recognising that it's not always plain sailing as far as angling is concerned, that we do have to battle on sometimes. But, as I often find, the more I battle on, the more I think it through, the more I try and work it out and uh, get the better of the fish, I often do.
as you've gathered I'm fishing with bread this week and what I am doing is I've got some blue cheese liquid this is concentrated so it's not to dip this is for making boilies or paste I'm just laying a little bit touch my uh, finger like so and then I'm rubbing it in and I'm using that hand to take the bread to put on the hook therefore giving the hook bait a slight edge over the rest of the bread that I'm throwing out A lot of anglers are quite uh, sceptical, even cynical, when it comes to dips and glugs. Now as far as I'm concerned, I am a fan. I do use them a lot, as you no doubt aware, if you follow my blogs on a regular basis. But the way I look at it is that they certainly don't do any harm, do they? If you are dipping your baits, it's not going to give you a, a negative effect. So even if, and I stress the even if, even if, it only gives you confidence, say if it's all in the mind as some anglers believe, even if it only gives you confidence, then that surely is a good thing in itself. Because the more confident we are, I believe, the more comfortable we are with our fishing. And for example, you leave baits out longer because you know they're in the right spot, you know that it's the right bait, and you do fish better with confidence. So if it's just a confidence thing, then I think baits and uh, baits, uh, glugs and dips are, are a good idea. But as far as I'm concerned, I really do believe that they give us the edge. And it's times when it's very, very difficult. The going is definitely uh, tough. That it's that one bait that's been soaked or dipped or glugged that can sometimes make the difference. Anyway, the video comes to an end now. I'm ready to pack away. I've had three fish in three sessions, although the two chub, the target species for the week, haven't been bad, have they really? They've been a decent size. That's my fishing. Fishing can be to each and every one of us what we want it to be. As far as I'm concerned, I'm happy to catch not so many, but bigger ones. Now other people want to just catch whatever comes along and there's no doubt about it if I was fishing with maggots this week then I would have caught a lot more fish but not necessarily the ones that I wanted to. Anyway depending on when you're watching this video of course if it's within a few days of it being uploaded have a great Christmas have a wonderful time and I'll see you next week.